Well, hello everyone and welcome to Canva Corner. I'm Matt Emerson, co-founder of WBNL Coaching. And today we are going to talk about infographics. I'm gonna give you a quick way to create them in Canva. And then I'm going to, our, our Canva Spotlight tool this week is going to be the Magic Resize. So we're gonna learn infographics and we're gonna play with Magic Resize. Before we get started though, uh, if you were in our Facebook group, I want you to uh, go and invite your friends. We wanna we want to expand our community. We want to grow our group so people, can, other people just like you can enjoy Canva tips. So if you're in Facebook, invite your friends to join our group. And if you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and hit that like button, smash that like button as a matter of fact, subscribe and make sure you hit that little bell icon so you can be reminded to get your Canva tip, which we do every Wednesday here in uh, YouTube. So before we get started, I also want to introduce my co-founder of WBNO Coaching, Jan O'Brien. She's always uh, here to uh, help us along as we go through our things. We try to bring you up-to-date real estate tools and tips. Jan and I were talking not too long ago. Gosh, when was that, Jan? A couple weeks ago, you were talking about how you wanted to, you, you already do an incredible newsletter that you send out. You actually create for your team in Canva, well, partially yeah. in Canva. And then you, um, you let your team send it out to their clients, which is a, you know, a, a incredible uh, tool. And you were thinking how you could kind of, you know, plus it a little bit. And you would ask me, you know, how can we create an infographic for... A reusable infographic. Yeah, actually. a reusable. Yes, exactly. That's the key. A reusable infographic for um, market stats each month. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Super easy. Of course, we can do that in Canva. So, you know, we thought we would jump in and, uh, you know, kind of dive into that today and just kind of talk about infographics in general. So okay. let, me, let me pull up my screen here. So let's talk about just about infographic. Well, first of all, we get started. I want to say this every week, because if you are joining us and you aren't a Canva user yet, and you're looking to know more about Canva, make sure you go over to Canva.com. You can get a free version of Canva. It's the basic version incredible tools in the basic version, and you can upgrade to the pro, which is only $12.95 a month. Uh, highly recommend that. As a matter of fact, when you go, you can actually sign up for a 30-day free trial of the pro as you go into the, the, the program. So you are not going to be unhappy. Canva is a great investment in your business. So let's talk a little bit about infographics. What the heck is infographics? They've been around for, gosh, probably 20 years or so now. Everybody knows what they are. They see them all the time. They really are just a way you can communicate something in as easy and as simple format as possible that is visual and actually guides people through a process, right? Or gives them information in, in uh, little chunks that they want to know. And here's an example of a, a couple of them. We're going to look at a lot more of those, those today. What they really do is help you improve cognition by utilizing graphics to enhance the human visual system's ability to see patterns and trends. Okay. And trend okay. what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it really is just a way to, to just kind of help move the eye around using icons that actually mean something or grow to mean something to the consumer on the other side. And you're going to see what we're talking about when it comes to that, when we start actually digging into the market trends. As always in Canva, you have a few options every week. We're going to talk about this as well. There are a trillion Canva templates in the program. There are a trillion. Um, Too many. As we see in a moment, we're going to see a trillion um, uh, infographic ones. So you can just go in there, find one, use it, like, you know, up, you know, uh, put your information in just a little bit, or you can kind of take one and kind of completely rework it, which actually is what we're going to do today. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Um, uh, the easiest thing to do from your homepage at Canva is just search infographics. And when you search infographics, you're going to see too many, uh, a ton that show up. <laughs> <laughs> these are actually, I don't want you to go down the rabbit hole, people, but these are actually fun to actually look at because these are. these are all real. They, this has real content in it. And it's kind of humorous to to look through a lot of these. There aren't any of these that are specifically tooled to like a real estate market trends report. So that's why uh, what we're going to do today is a little bit, we have to do a little more retooling that you might have to do. But there's, a, there's just a lot of different choices in here. Remember when you're looking at these templates always that you might think, oh, that's not the right color or that's the wrong uh, the, the wrong font. All of that obviously can be changed. That's the beauty of Canva. So if you like a style of something, you can go ahead and select it. So the, what we, when Jan and I talked about this, what we selected or what we wanted to convey to our consumer were just five stats every month. And those stats are units sold, new listings, 
units available, median pr uh, uh, price sold, and inventory. So those are the five stats we're looking for. So as I was perusing the templates here, I was looking for something that had a pre-built in uh, you know, uh, structure that would display five items, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, this one obviously uh, would have worked. There's five items here. I didn't really like the boxiness of that. Maybe that's something you like. It's totally up to you. Subjective stuff, right? You know, this one had too much. Doesn't mean you can't rework any of these. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of looking down. I like the timeline kind of thing. I think that's kind of a cool uh, way for the eye to kind of be visually be led around the page. Uh, so, but this one just was a little bit too boring for me. I like that it says my morning routine. I know. I love that actually, Jan. I thought of you immediately when I saw that. So yeah. And you could put little pictures of things you did in the morning. I mean, I, I swear you really could, uh, like everything in Canva, you could go down the rabbit hole. It's really fun. Get, yeah. You get other ideas. To your point, you get other ideas like you could mark down and say, ooh, I could come back and do that later. That, absolutely. That's right. Um, so as you can see, this just goes on. And on mm -hmm. and on, as always. Now, I landed on this uh, design right here okay. because I liked it that it was had it. Obviously, there was a place for five. There were five icons on here because I wanted to showcase icons that hopefully over time people would start to kind of become familiar with. Um, it was clean. I didn't particularly care for the color theme uh, scheme on this. It was a little dark, I thought. But I thought, you know what? Let's go in here and let's try to play with that one and see what it see what it does. So once you click on that, you're gonna you're it, you know obviously it will pull up here on the screen. You see that, okay, Jenna Brian? Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. Okay. All right. So you know. What I wanted to do, and actually we were making this for the O'Brien uh, Marabi team uh, in Vegas. So we're going to use utilize their color palette, obviously, when we're doing this. And then we just wanted to change some things on here. Like this font, I think it, it kind of disappears a little bit in the, in the thing. So let's just play with this a little bit. As with most things you're going to find in a template in Canva, they're grouped together. Text boxes are grouped together. And the reason why they're, they're like that is so you can go in easily and move them around as a unit. And you can you can place them wherever you want to in here nice and neatly. So I'm going to want to come in here and ungroup this. I'm going to take off that top line. We're going to change this real quickly. I'm not going to do this whole thing. I just want to give you a kind of example of what I have done here. December 2020. Let's change this to uh, Montserrat. That is kind of a nice font there. First of all, let's change this background to something that's a little bit more O'Brien Marabi team. That might be, I don't think that's quite your orange, but it's close enough mm -hmm. for this demo. Okay. Change that. Maybe we'll bump this font up a little bit. Maybe we'll see 64. Yeah, that's too much. You know, they have these built in font sizes here, but you can actually change this to any size font you want. So if you right. don't want that to be 64, you can go in here and let's say, hey, let's see if 58 is going to work. Ah, and it does. So we'll put that here. This is, you have to give it a header so they people know what they're looking at. Las Vegas market, market update. We're gonna change that color to white as well. We're going to make that bold, make it 42. I don't know, we'll just play around with this. Maybe move that to the top, move this down. Maybe we'll center this. I mean, you like I said, you go and you can play with this all that you want to here because it's completely obviously super easy to work and change. So anyway, I, like I said, I could, I don't want this to be, we don't, we're not worrying about perfect right now. So, all right, let's change this background to white so it's nice and clean and crisp. Okay, that changes some of the things here. So you're gonna to wanna to go in and like that line that went down the way was white in the other design. So you're gonna to want to change this. Let's change it to a blue. And then let's see these back. Actually, you know what? Let's make this blue. And we'll make these little, we don't, obviously in the market update for units sold, it is not a plate, a fork and a spoon. No. So we're gonna take that out. We'll change this to be one of the uh, accent colors for the team. Change this to units sold. Make that blue, we'll make it bold. We'll make it Montserrat. Well, who knows how big we're gonna put it here. Well, let's make it 32. 
And then down here in the second box, let's see, I believe there were 3,035. Oops, what's happening here? What happened to my text? Oh, there it is. Well, it's in white, that's why. Boop. 3,035 bold and bigger. Whoops, that's a whole lot more than that. And that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be a lot of sales, wouldn't it? Or, yeah. And in this particular case, we wanted to show what the difference was over prior month. Actually, prior year. Over prior year, which actually maybe we want to put that on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which was 26. Well, what I was going to do is put it in the remarks. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And describe it. Okay, so we want the headline, kind of the headline of this to be the number, right? So we're going to make this difference a smaller font. So it's still big, but it's not as bold. And then uh, Jan and I decided just to make this stand out a little bit more. And actually, this was Jan's suggestion when we when I sent this back to her uh, to make our positives green and our negatives, if there are any, red. So we're going to go right on in here. We'll make this one green. And now we're going to throw in a, a, uh, a little visual here in this icon. First of all, I think this icon's a little bit small. So let's make that a little bit bigger. Put that over there. Go over here to elements. We will put in, let's see, sold homes. Let's see what comes up here. A lot of things come up. So you can look for an icon that's going to work in here. I mean, you could put this, for example, you could put this in here. I'm going to change it to white so it'll be behind that background, make it a little bit smaller. I'm going, I know I'm going faster, but you guys get the drift. Cool. All right. So let's just use that as our example. You know, you would obviously go in here and put all the rest of the bins, your new listings, your units um, available, your median price sold, and your inventory down here. Put all of your um, your information in here. You're always going to want to put a disclaimer on where you got your information if you're doing a market update. So at the bottom here, you'll just add a little tag that says what your source is. Now, that, to that point, that's where we could probably also put. Uh, oh yeah, any yeah. You know, uh, uh, com comparisons are year over year. And I also need it to say single family because these are just single family. They're not condos yeah, and all exactly. that. Exactly. So you can, you and know, you maybe, oh, sorry, Matt, you also would maybe want to brand it if you wanted to. You could always put your logo in. Or I was just going to say that we decided because this particular thing was going to be used inside their newsletter. Their newsletter was already branded with their header and there was other references to the company that this particular infographic didn't need another logo. Because I'm going to tell you, even though you'll hear in every branding thing you talk about that logo, 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 logo. I personally think that you can overdo it. Agreed. Right? So, you know, you really can. Now you can make two versions of this if you wanted to, right? So there's different, different things. Now this was the, the finished product that we ended up doing for Jan. So you can see this is, this was done a little bit more. I mean, there's a little more detail. I put another box behind the orange to make it pop out a little bit more. I had, you know, these are the icons that I picked, but certainly there's a lot of choices for icons in here. And then as you can see down here at the bottom, we did actually have the source, uh, source value in there. So super simple. We're going to we're going to tweak on this a little bit just during this conversation we've already come up with a couple more things to add on this mm -hmm. because you want to make sure you get to the place that you are happy with your infographic and I'm not saying you can't change it every month but once again with anything you do consistency is really really important and um uh, if you find a design people will start understanding what's on there. Right. They will look forward to seeing what is on on the actual design. So, you know, I you know, for me all Marketing is a marathon and not a sprint. So take a little bit of time, get it right, and then use that the heck out of that. And then the following year, change it up or change it up every six months. I mean, just let there be a little bit of consistency so people can get used to, um, you know, what you're what you're doing. What other infographics could you build for your real estate business? Business. I mean, really, honestly, it's kind of endless. You could put together life of an escrow. You could put information about the mortgage process uh, in, in in your uh, your thing. If you're if you are you know helping your I don't know. There's just so many things. You if you have a section of your newsletter that is about uh, businesses and restaurants and things in your community, you could do a showcase of of, of, uh, of a city or, and different uh, uh, places within your city. So there is really a number of things that you can do with an infographic. There is actually one in here as a template that uh, 
goes through all the different social media platforms. And it was built as a marketing tool to show you how these tools can work. You could retool that to have an infographic that has a jumping off place and shows where you are online and encourages people to actually go and subscribe to your channels or to, to like your social media page. So there's a number of different things you can do with, um, with infographics. So that's your market trends uh, report. I want to talk about our spotlight tool here in Canva this week, and that is the Magic Resize. Jan, have you ever used the Resize tool? Yes, I have, and I like it a lot. Okay, Resize tool is, to me, the coolest thing because inevitably you are going to want to use your design in more than one form. These infographics, as wonderful as they are, are just a weird-ass shape. They're long, <laughs> you know, right? They're really they long. are. They're they don't really fit in a lot of places. Like if you, you this wouldn't really work on Facebook. It's just they they are a little bit cumbersome. But they kind of have to be really in order for them to to have their true story, right? Because you're supposed to flow. Now, if you wanted to change this into Facebook uh, post, which we're going to do right now, um, you could just go and re recreate the whole thing. But it's silly to do that. You, there's just really no reason to do that. So we're going to go up here to resize. And we are going to hit Facebook post. Now, you could, if you decided, I don't want to do an infographic. I just want to use this as a Facebook post. You could just actually hit the resize button and it will resize this and it will not keep your infographic size. We don't want to do that because we want to have two different things going on here. So we're going to copy this, uh, copy this, uh, copy and resize. All right. Now, like I just mentioned, the, the the Facebook post size is over here. See the arrow all the way to over here. So it didn't, oh, yeah, there's a lot it, didn't of resize this. it didn't really truly resize this as a Facebook post. But I want, what I want you to remember, all the elements that you need for your final version are here are now in here. Right. So, yeah, so you know, what you have to do to make this happen. Cause yeah. Like so all you have to do here, you know, I mean, like I said, it's, it's a little bit cumbersome. You have to go in. It's kind of like rebuilding it, but at the same time, you're not because yeah, I got it. You know what I'm saying? And you can move all of your elements around all over your, so it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's a heck of a lot faster than going in there and then redesigning the whole entire um, uh, thing. So let me go back to home here for a second. And I'm gonna pull up what that actually looked like whenever we resized it to a Facebook and I did all the changing around here. So now we have exactly the same look and feel of that infographic, except for it is now the size of the Facebook post. Now in Facebook, you're probably gonna to want to put on your logo. So we've added the logo up here at the top of the, the Facebook uh, post here. All the same information on here. You know, it's a little bit bigger. You can see it a little bit brighter. You can see that Jan's suggestion of making these, uh, you know, the uh, percentages a different color worked out really, really nicely. So you are all set to go. We still have our source disclaimer at the very bottom of the page as well. So all your information is there. You can download this and you can send it right off onto Facebook. Or remember, everybody, right up here at the top, you can post this right to Facebook you know, right into inside your uh, Canva. So you can shoot it up. That. Yep. So right in there. Now I'm going to give you another little tip here that I like. And, you know, I, movement on a Facebook page is always eye catching. Right. And now that they have so many different little things loaded into Canva that you can do stickers and things, you might want to think about adding something to this just so there's a little bit of movement on your Facebook page. Now I love these little swooshy things. I just think they add, they're not a lot. It's not, a, it's not super corny, you know, and it adds movement to the page. So you could put this on here, hmm. put it up here at the top. Let's put it back in the back here. So it's behind all your words. Oh, went too far. <laughs> let's bring it up forward a little bit and let's lighten it up a little bit. So it doesn't take away. Oh, cool. So just that little tiny subtle movement is going to be some movement on your Facebook page as opposed to just a regular post that's there. I love it. Yeah. So, and once again, you can put a lot of things on here that might be a little, well, you know what? I'm not going to say it's corny. Everyone has their own taste, you know, yeah. so you can do whatever you want to do on this, make it as much, do whatever you want to. I'm, I always think with things like this, less is more, but knock yourself out. But that if, subtle little swoosh might catch somebody's eye as they're scrolling right. through their Facebook feed, just enough to say, what's this, right? That's right. That's exactly right. 
That's exactly right. And if you back this up with a video that you've done, I mean, obviously you could post the video, but let's say the video is a little bit longer. You go into other things about the market that you have posted either on your website or you have posted somewhere else. You know, this might catch their eye and make them actually click the link to go over to wherever. All right, Jan, do you have any other questions for today? No, I love it. This is All brilliant. Right. And I am uh, going to be, I just made a note because I'm going to be posting this in our Facebook group today. Awesome. Very good. Um, I, I love it. We, like I said, we're going to do these uh, these every week. So don't forget to come back and and, and hit that, um, that subscribe button. Uh, if you're on YouTube, tell your friends if you're on Facebook. And don't forget, if you want to learn more about Jan and I and Wandering and, and Cosmo and Wandering uh, WBNL Coaching, go over to our website. That's WBNLCoaching.com. You can learn more about us, learn about more about the uh, the tools and the courses that we offer over on our website. And you can also get to our podcast right here on our site and listen to all of our tips that we do every week. We're going to be up to episode 147 this week. So don't forget to go over there. I want you guys to get up. I want you to go be creative. And as always, everybody, remember, be forever wandering, but not lost. Mm -hmm.